short video, I'd like to just illustrate a couple of things that you can do to document eye parts when it comes to a drawing. So this is one of my favorite eye parts that I ever make. It's called uh, Custom Dimensioned Lumber. And it's basically all sorts of different lumber uh, size dimensionally, 2x4, 2x6, 2x10, etc, etc. And then I've got maple and pine and sometimes you can add other materials as well. And so what I do is I create a custom eye part where I've got the dimensional lumber, the thickness and the width defined. But then what I do is I set the length to be a custom field. That way I can, on any given woodworking project I'm doing or construction project, I can place the material that I want at whatever length is appropriate for that design. So it's a really fantastic technique. Uh, I recommend it uh, if you're not familiar with custom eye parts. It's probably something that you want to take a look at if you get a pretty standard shape, but you end up using different lengths of it. So that's that. Uh, but what I want to show today is what you can do in the drawing environment. So if I uh, start a new drawing, I'm going to go ahead and grab my base view. And since I already have the part open, it's easy to find it. I'll just grab that one. And I'm going to look at it as an isometric view. And I also want the scale to be, well, let's just do one to one. So we'll do full scale. Again, you can size out whatever makes sense on your sheet of paper. And I don't need to see it shaded, so I'll untoggle that. And I hit OK. Cool. So there's my regular dimension lumber. <clears throat> and so documenting an eye part. It's pretty much the same as documenting most any other part. Um, I guess one thing I kind of did jump over really quickly, I'm going to double click on that view, is when you look at the display, uh, uh, let's see, model state, display options, you can choose the member. It's already been defaulted, so I'm good with that, but you could choose it to display a different member if you want. And <clears throat> the other thing that's you can do when you're doing an eye part is you can create a table. So most of the time I, I kind of dislike the general table. It doesn't give me a lot of what I need, but if I click on the general table and then I pick a view that contains an eye part or an eye assembly of that nature, it actually gives me the opportunity to build a useful table. So you can um, choose the or use the column chooser to rearrange things. So I've got member, thickness, material, then width. Well, I'd rather have the width listed Whoops. before the material. So we can rearrange that. You can add other types of information from your eye part. You have filters for different pieces of information from the eye part. Then I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And then I click OK again. And now it produces a nice little table. So I can see that I've got my member, thickness, width, etc. So because it's an eye part, it produces a, a big table. And if I was to come in here and add dimensions, and you can dimension in 3D, if I was to dimension that, I'm going to get very specific sizes. Hit the space bar, I'd rather have it on that one. So what we can do to fix that is while you're still in the dimension tool, you can single click on any dimension or you can double left click if you're not in the dimension tool. And what I like to do is I like to hide the value and list out what that dimension is actually measuring. So I can say width and I can say thickness. So by using a generic type of dimension, I can reference fields in the table so that way somebody doesn't have to produce a drawing for all 12 configurations. You can do one drawing that refers to this table of data, um, we used to call this a table drawing, and then you'll be able to figure out the sizing and some of the features of the part. So I hope you found this useful. Uh, that's pretty much it for documenting eye parts as far as I'm concerned. And if you have any questions, let me know. Otherwise, have a blessed day.